How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student, and today we're going to be talking about how to interpret your annual physical lab results or your general like three month follow up lab results because nobody has a clue on what these values mean. Is it high? Is it low? Okay, it's, it's showing that it's high, but what does it mean? I've been wanting to make this video for a while, specifically because I see so often I've been working at primary care clinics the last two years as a medical student in my clinical rotations. But something that I notice a lot is that um, there is one or two doctors that I've met that do an incredible job, incredible job interpreting the lab results to your patient and explaining what each of these values mean. While there are other doctors, although they mean well, they just don't have time to sit down and tell you, well, this value is high, it means this, this, and that. They just give you suggestions or start prescribe you, prescribing you a medication, and you don't even have time uh, to ask questions. So today, uh, my goal is to actually show y'all um, my annual <laughs> physical lab results and how I interpret the values. And although, um, I am a, I'm a, full disclosure, I'm a young guy, so my doctor doesn't check everything uh, that they would check if I was, let's say, a 35-year-old or a 45-year-old, um, and I'm generally healthy. My previous uh, annual physicals have all been healthy, so uh, I don't get as much labs called in. I don't have a lot of outward symptoms. I'm, I don't look pale. Is there an iron deficiency? So my doctor doesn't order those things for me. Also, there can be gender differences based on what hormone you're dominant in, either estrogen or testosterone, or your body anatomy uh, that a doctor may um, pull differing results on. But today I'm going to be focusing on the most common things doctors check. And another, another key caveat is that I'm not going to go over every single value. I'm going to go over the key ones that you should look out for. And uh, another thing that uh, disclosure that I wanna give is don't start freaking out if you're interpreting your results and you're like, oh my God, this is like super low or super high, stay calm and um, follow up with your doctor and be like, hey doc, so I noticed this is this value is different. Uh, should I, should I uh, do something about it? Because more often than not, uh, even though that the lab values are telling you it's high or low, it's probably insignificant or it could be a lab error. That is more common than you think. Labs mess up all the time because they get thousands and thousands of sample every day to analyze. And sometimes the machine isn't calibrated right. So before um, I start showing y'all my lab values over the years and before I reveal all my medical <laughs> information to y'all, <laughs> uh, I wanna give a couple of caveats. The first thing is that um, if you've never been to a doctor before, it's been a couple of years since you uh, visited your doctor and you've just gotten your annual physical results, um, this might not be as important this video because that uh, when you visit a doctor for the first time or st establishing yourself as a patient you're getting a baseline value and what i'm going to do is my method of interpreting lab results which is not just looking at the results i get now i compare it to my previous lab results from the following year or the following appointment where the doctors ran the same lab so for me i'm going to be showing you all my last two annual physicals the one i did ooh, my light went out. <laughs> okay, so I totally forgot to charge my light, but I have a backup light available. Well, uh, back to what I was saying, um, I am going to compare my last two years uh, lab results, which is the one I had done this year, literally a week ago, versus the one I had done last December um, to kind of gauge how I'm doing. And uh, depending on whether or not my values went up or down, it's going to tell me if I'm doing a good job. And whatever changes I've made in my lifestyle is probably helping those values improve. Or I might uh, point out some idiosyncrasies in those lab values too. The first thing on my lab report that I want to check out is the CBC section that stands for complete blood count. Basically what they do is they take the vial of blood that I have and run it through a machine and the machine kind of figures out all the cells that are in my blood and the three values for, for the for the context of this video that you want to look out for is your white blood cell count your hemoglobin and your red blood cell count so the white blood cell count tells you how many white blood cells your immune fighters are in your body if that's normal no issues if it's low it could mean that um you might, you might be fighting off an infection, and if it's high, it could also mean that you're fighting off an infection. So it's very up to 
uh, how you presented when you got those lab results. So uh, don't worry about that. Your doctor will explain it to you if it's high or low. Now, as far as the red blood cell count and the hem hemoglobin, you want to look at these two values to together. If they're both low or if the hemoglobin is low, it could mean uh, a iron iron deficiency. That means you're not your body is not doesn't have enough iron in it. This is a common problem that we see in young people, but also elderly people too, especially those who are estrogen dominated and women tend to have low uh, low levels of iron because they lose blood. So another reason why your hemoglobin or your red blood cell count may be low is because you've lost blood recently and that's why it's showing out in the labs as low if you have no idea i don't know if my if i've been losing blood why is it low your doctor will do follow-up iron studies to make sure you have enough iron in your body and if you um and then uh it can be um a remedy as simple as taking iron pills or following up with a uh, gastroenterologist to see if you're not you know losing any blood through your gut system uh, because of a peptic ulcer or, or anything more serious or uh, following up with a um, heme onc doctor which is a blood and cancer doctor it's called hematology oncology if any of these three values are also high you might have to follow up with a hematologist oncologist a lot of people start freaking out because they're like oh my god my values are high i have cancer that that that's the last case scenario uh don't worry most of the times i've actually shattered a uh, um, heme onc and most of the times when primary care providers send people with high CBC values to um, to us, the doctor's like, no, you're fine. You're just you're just a little bit different. Your values are just a little bit higher than most people. We don't we don't got to do anything about it. Just come back every couple of months, like maybe every every year, every six months. Um, and then we can assess if it's changing. If it starts changing, then it could mean another in intervention but that's beyond the scope of this video everything else on that cbc section is irrelevant for the context of this video if any other values are grossly really high or really low your doctor will have to do some follow-up tests so moving on uh, we have the next comprehensive metabolic panel also known as the cam 14 or something like that but this is where uh, some of the more important stuff that you want, want to look at uh, for your regular follow-up visits um, shows so the first thing we want to look at is the glucose how your your blood glucose so it, it, it's a really good indication of whether or not uh, you know it's high if it's high that means we need to start uh thinking about uh whether or not you're developing any form of um, insulin resistance so then your doctor will follow up or at the same time order a hemoglobin a1c that looks at your three month average glucose if that is high over the value it could mean that you are pre-diabetic or diabetic so Glucose and hemoglobin A1c are very, very important values to look at during your routine lab uh, visits. So for mine, uh, my old one was 86. That's fine. That's normal, which no, no worries about, um, you know, insulin resistance. And my follow up was 94, which is still in the ne ne uh, normal range. I know that uh, 94 is higher, higher than 86. That does not mean anything. As long as it's in the normal range, I am Gucci. The next three values that are important that go along together is the BUN, the creatinine, and the BUN creatinine ratio along, that's actually four values, along with the GFR. So these values actually assess your kidney, your kidney function. So um, if the BUN and creatinine is higher than average, that could indicate your kidneys are taking a hit for some reason. I want to preface this by saying if you eat a lot of protein or you work out a lot like me and I take supplements such as protein and creatinine, sometimes it's going to be a little bit above normal. It's happened to me in the past. It's a non-issue. Nothing really happens. But if it's if your creatinine is over 1.2 and if your BUN is over like 23, it could mean some. Oh, we need to look at that GFR value. So GFR looks at your glomerular filtration rate what does that mean it just means the rate that your kidneys filter um in, filter water essentially filter your electrolytes too so we this is the most important we want this one to be in the normal range so if it's in the normal range your kidneys are healthy you're doing great uh good job if it's low it could mean that you have some form of acute kidney injury that could be as simple as getting hit in the sides or if you have a long, long history of diabetes, we need to monitor this 
over and over again and more routinely if we start seeing a dip down. So another really important thing to note is that even if it's a normal value, if we see it dipping down over time, especially if you have a diagnosis such as type 2 diabetes, we need to be vigilant very very vigilant about keeping up with those values and maybe prescribing some drugs to make sure it doesn't continue to dip even if it's in the low to normal range so for my bun creatinine bun creatinine ratio and my egfr everything's in the normal range in both this year and last year so we're good here too Another value you want to look at and I wanted to highlight in this section of the lab report is the calcium value. This is important because I think it uh, says a good indicator of how much nutritional calcium you're getting and it's calcium is a huge uh, component of pro protecting your bones. So I think it's very important for every patient to check this value themselves. And for me, it, as you've seen that um, it hasn't changed much. It's on the higher, higher normal range. Um, last year was 10.3 and this year it was 10.1. I think the 10.3 is a lab error. It might be detecting it a little bit too high because when you are at 10.3, uh, you start um, showing symptoms of <laughs> calcium toxicity, like muscle spasms and facial spasms and twitching. I didn't have any of that. I just think um, my body naturally runs, my baseline calcium is naturally 10, um, 10 to 10.2. So this is normal. I've never had any symptoms from having high calcium. And this is uh, another reason for me to emphasize that for many people, your baseline might not be in the normal range. So my baseline for calcium is always in the high to normal range. I've never had issues with it. So the last thing on the comprehensive metabolic panel that you want to look at is um, the AST and ALT, which tell you how good your liver is doing. This is really important, especially in America, where a lot of people drink alcohol and uh, some people might have elevated liver levels which is an indication for you to cut down. <laughs> like there's there's no put, uh, there's no sugar coating it. If you drink alcohol chronically and these levels are rising, you need to cut it down. Uh, other liver conditions can also influence these levels and also it's a good follow up to check these liver levels when you're on certain medications that can affect your liver. I'm on testosterone, which does affect the liver, um, but luckily you see it's not affecting my liver. Um, affecting my liver at all because I'm using it responsibly, I'm using it as prescribed, and I don't chronically drink alcohol. So my liver is completely A-OK -okay and we can move on. So now we're really getting into the juicy labs, the labs that really do tell you if you've been eating well, if you need to you know, cut down on eating some fats, or if, um, you know, just uh, overall nutritionally how you're doing and as far as um, exercise. So in my first one, the first thing is the lipid panel with the LDL-HDL ratio. The lipid panel tells you about your cholesterol, uh, your triglycerides, which is another form of fat your body produces, and your LDL and HDL cholesterol. So HDL is the good cholesterol, so you want that to be on the normal to high range, and LDL is your bad cholesterol, so you don't want that to be high at all. So. Let's look at mine because it's interesting. It's interesting. So looking at last year's, right, uh, we see that my cholesterol is fine. Great. Yay me. My triglycerides are fine. That's also really good. It's at 124. And uh, my HDL is low. So it's at 31. Ideally, for most people, we want that number to be 40. So my good cholesterol is low. This has been a concern of mine for a while. Uh, I've had this value for the last couple of years, but new, re new, uh, new and more research is showing that although previously they thought good cholesterol had a really good, um, a really good um, correlation with making sure your heart is okay, more and more research is showing sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, for some people so for me I am a pretty active guy I take fish oil supplements like I do everything it is to everything I can uh, another thing is that um, some of these values like the hemoglobin a1c and your cholesterol can really be influenced by your genetics so my family history of cholesterol and history of diabetes so whether or not I can I can have the most perfect a uh, clean zero fat diet in my life but some of these values are just going to be not so ideal because it runs in my genetics so um hdl is low i i'm very very uh upfront with that but if you look at this year's value it hasn't dipped down at all it went up one value so this is where i kind of stay this is my baseline so as long as i'm not going any more any more under than the 31 32 i think i'll be okay 
The next value that I noticed uh, that was a little bit, a little bit high was my LDL. So from last year, this is the bad cholesterol. A uh, VLDL is another form of bad cholesterol, but the LDL is the one that we really check as physicians. The LDL, my one, we see that it's, it, it's indicated as high, it's at 129, but uh, this is where it really depends on the lab and that lab interprets results because for uh, people who don't have high cholesterol, people who are young, um, as long as it's under 130, you're fine. You don't need any form of medication. So even though mine is saying, hi, it's at 129, it, it, it's not really. I don't really need any form of drugs or uh, I'm actually pretty okay here. But uh, if you look into this year, I'm actually doing a lot better. It's at 118. Actually, I also noticed my triglycerides have improved a lot. Last year, even though it's in the normal range at 124, at 124 this year, it's at 73. So I'm actually doing pretty good. Um, I was a little worried about this because I had my annual physical around December, which is Christmas time, th Christmas, Thanksgiving time, where I generally tend to eat a lot more. But what I've been doing recently is even though I've been eating more red meat, I've been straining all the fat. So I, w once I'm done browning my meat, once I'm done cooking, I've also been grilling a lot with my electric grill, which drips away all the fat in the meat that I cook. So um, my labs, even though on the on the reference ranges it's high as far as ldl ratios and things i'm improving a lot and i'm so proud of myself for that so the next lab is a follow-up to the glucose with that we saw in the comprehensive Met metabolic panel the cam 14 panel and this is the hemoglobin a1c like i've said before it's the three month average of your blood glucose and i'm doing excellent here so last year it was at 5.3 which is excellent we usually want it to be below 5.7 anyone from 5.7 to 5 6.4 it's in the pre-diabetes range. That means you don't need to be on any medications, but we need to monitor you and maybe make some lifestyle changes, less sugar, less uh, simple carbs and more complex carbs and more fiber in your diet. So that's that range where we're like, okay, let's 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 keep monitoring it. But when it's over six point five, that's when you have the dia uh, the diagnosis of diabetes. So for me, I have uh, my most recent one was 4.1, 4.9. So I'm in the normal range and I'm I'm good. And we're at near the end of my report as far as the most important things that my doctor checked. And the last thing for me specifically as a person of color is testing my vitamin D. I've always been in my life low on vitamin D, but I've been really working on improving that. I take vitamin D supplements and you'll see that I've improved here as well. I'm so happy. Like I'm just so, I'm trying not to brag, but I'm just so happy about how well, I'm doing, especially as someone who's aging right now, I finally hit my mid 20s. I'm going to hit my 30s soon. I've just been really turning my life around and changing some things I've done in my life and like more irresponsible things I did back when I was, you know, a bumbling teen. I have, I've been trying to cut back on a lot of those things and I've been doing really well. So uh, because uh, last year my vitamin D was at 33, which is a little bit above normal still. You know, we got to we got to monitor that. But this year it went up to 42. I'm so, so happy about that. But I will say big, big caveat in this is that last year I was in my clinical rotation, so I barely ever saw the sun. This year I'm in my fourth year chill rotation. So I'm actually going out, <laughs> going out and seeing the sun um, and like not stuck in the hospital all the time. I can actually go on walks and stuff. So maybe that's why my, my D values have increased by 10. But uh, before I started taking vitamin D supplements, my, my D levels were as low as 25, which is uh, pretty, pretty bad because the lower end is 30. And if you have low vitamin D, that can that can make you susceptible to, to things like COVID. Uh, research has shown low vitamin D levels is associated with COVID, but most importantly, the highest link of vitamin D is with calcium and it's your bone health. So we want good calcium and good vitamin D levels in our bodies. Anyways, we're at the end of my labs. Um, Y'all know my medical information now, so uh, do what you will with that. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I really enjoy sharing my lab results with you and explaining to you on how I interpret them and how I go from, you know, how, I, how do I follow up with my doctor? So if any of these values are significantly high, maybe like two or three levels higher than it should be, I immediately call my doctor or wait till my doctor to call me because usually if it's 
the levels are out of whack, the doctor is going to call you <laughs> to come back into the office and be evaluated. Um, but I hope this eases some of y'all's anxiety about interpreting your lab results and I hope it helps you uh, kind of understand why we run the labs that we do and uh, the next steps we think about taking. So I know a, a lot of the things I said are kind of ambiguous if they come up as high or low, but that's because if these lab values are very high or very low, it can mean a bunch of different things. I just want to make sure that you know uh, what is a good value to stay in um, and don't be alarmed if you're just a little bit high because it just might be a lab error or that could just be your baseline. And even though your values are normal, check the trends over time. Are you doing better or are you doing worse? So um, other than that, I hope you got something out of it. I hope that you'll share this information with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my social media and activism work. And hopefully I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.